visited Sarah, as he had said, the word that appears here, the word visited, is actually a synonym of he thought of her, he remembered her, he, rem he was reminded of her. It is a word that appears several times in the Bible and it's actually very much connected later on when Israel was in Egypt that the Lord remembered the people of Israel in Egypt and the heir, Isaac, who's going to be born, he's the beginning of this story. So it says the Lord visited Sarah, as later on, the evangelist Luke, for example, in the Gospel of Luke, says that the Lord God has visited his people send the Messiah. Or in Acts 15, we have the remark that the living God visited, in this case, the Gentiles to gather out of them, to take out of them a people for his name. So with this simple word we have there is a lot of ideas connected throughout the whole Bible. I start once again. The Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and he did to Sarah as he had spoken. Sarah became pregnant and bore Abram a son in his old age, exactly at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham called the name of his son who was born to him, whom Sarah bore to him, he called him Yitzchak. We had talked about that, what laughter means. It says one laughs or the people around laugh when they see the situation. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, we call him in English, when he was eight days old. So Isaac, from the very beginning, was taken into the covenant with God. Exactly as God had commanded to Abraham. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. So just to remind ourselves, it was about a quarter a century earlier that Abraham, when he still was a young guy of 75 years, he got a promise and he had to wait for 25 years until the son God had promised to him was born. Sarah said, and I try to translate that exactly to you. It says here, God has made a joke. God had made something to laugh about for me, to me or with me. Now you choose how you want to translate it. Whether God has made Sarah to be a joke or whether he made her laugh or whether somebody looks at the situation and, and just bursts into laughing. It's all contained. You know, it's a very rich saying here. Everyone who hears that what happened to me, says Sarah, will laugh over me or with me. She said, who would have dared to say to Abraham, Sarah nurses children, yet I have borne him a son in his old age. You may image for yourself this picture of an old couple. He is 100 years old, she a little younger, and they do not have a great grandchild, another grandchild, but they have a child. A rabbinic interpreter says, now Sarah is really free to laugh. By the way, if I would now dig into this whole 
making a joyful noise about a newborn child, if I would dig into what that means in Scripture, I would end up that it's a sign for Messiah approaching. And you can, you may hear it if you want to hear with, I would say, Jewish ears or rabbinic ears, this whole scenario. There's one German rabbi in the Middle Ages, Rashi, who said, if Sarah says, whoever hears will laugh with me, he says, people will be happy with me, will be happy about me. And then the Midrash, an old Jewish explanation of the text says, and it, it, the Midrash always goes a little bit further, but it says something very meaningful. And you have that in mind, that this laughter is the expectation of Messiah. So the Midrash says, many barren women were visited together with her. Many sick people were healed on that very day. Many prayers were answered with her. And so there was a lot of laughter in the world. Now, look, Rashi and the Midrash were very rational people. They are not in a way mythical or, I don't know, believing in some fairy tale. But what they want to say here is that this whole thing points towards eternal redemption, towards the Messiah. But the, the, the real important issue here in these first verses of this chapter are that the Lord did to Sarah, and I include here the word, exactly as he had spoken to her. It is something very, very crucial that the word, that the Lord God is somebody who speaks and does it. He's something who spoke, I'm quoting here, Numbers 23, for example, he spoke and he really did what he had said. And if we go into the Jewish prayers, it very often talks about and it, it praises the one who speaks and does, who determines and then actually raises up how he had determined. Or if in morning prayer in the they, they, they pray, the Jewish people praise every morning, Baruch She'omer. Blessed be he, the one who says, they, they basically testify, they confess that the God of Israel is a faithful God who stands by his word. And therefore, I'm quoting here an old German rabbi again, therefore his promises are rock solid. Because he is also the one, not only the one, but the almighty one to fulfill what he has said before. And above all, he is the God of life. How much more does this apply today for us as we see, and I would like to take you wherever you are and show to you what happens here in this country of Israel where the Lord God brought his nation back as he has promised, had promised 2,500 years ago from all the corners of the earth. And you know, he, he, he talked about this return of the people of Israel to this land in a very detailed manner that he said there will be foreigners who, who will tend the fields, who will look after the cattle and the sheep, and if the prophet Isaiah, for example, asks, who are those? Like a cloud, they fly like doves to their dove coats. The rabbis, the Bible readers, even those Ethiopian Jews who never saw an airplane and then were brought here, they at once understood this is a literal fulfillment of what a prophet has said 2,500 years ago, we have a lot more things to put hand to touch it. Like I can grab this earth here that we see, and I would like to use the modern word objectively, from outside. You don't have to be a believer 
to see that God not only talks, not only talked thousands of years ago, but he does what he says. Now, if you go out and talk to some academics about that who are non-believers, they might laugh about it. They might think this is ridiculous to them. Well, that's the way how it has been from the very beginning that if God spoke and then did it, it sounded ridiculous to those who heard it and even to those who saw it. And if you see this old couple, Abraham, a hundred years old, and Sarah holding a child of their own, then whether it's being embarrassed or whether it's being unusual or whether it's being just ridiculous to think about it, it's something to laugh about. So if you laugh reading the Bible and say, it can't be, you're not the only one. This is how it was from the very beginning.